Alright, today we're going to be learning how to edit a photo in Lightroom Mobile. So you can just use your phone or your iPad or whatever you have Lightroom Mobile on and I'm going to show you how to make your picture look a lot better. I'm not using the free version of Lightroom Mobile, so if you do have Lightroom Mobile, the free version, basically the only differences will be the you cannot do masking and you cannot uh, have the AI detect for masking and all the stuff like that. So I will be using masking in the photo I will be editing just because I use masking a lot and masking really helps you edit your photo, manipulate how the photo looks to the eye. But I will show you the basics to make your photos look a lot better. All right, so first thing we're gonna do with this photo is we're gonna go to edit. We're gonna hit edit, we're gonna hit light. So instead of meshing with exposure, contrast, highlights first, we're gonna hit curve, which is right there. Now. Before we go crazy and any of this, what you want to always start with, unless you have something else in mind that you've learned, is you want to start with these three points right here on the uh, squares. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to create an S curve. So this is going to bring contrast into your image. So we're going to we're not going to do a huge S curve, just a little one, because we don't want to make this picture too uh, high in contrast. So now, once we do that, let's let's darken it just a little bit. So that would be, this is your shadows right here. This would be your midtones. So you could see this side right here would be your blacks, shadows, midtones, highlights, and whites. So we want, usually I like to live the midtones right in the middle and I'll bring down the uh, shadows just a little bit. We don't want to get it too dark to where it's like that and everything is just super saturated. We want to just make slowly down. Okay. And highlights, I, I always put my highlights a little bit farther up just because to me it looks a lot better. Whites, you want to bring your whites down just a little bit. It's called crushing the blacks and crushing your whites or crushing your highlights. So we're just gonna crush those just a tiny bit. We don't wanna go crazy where it looks like that because that is no bueno. So just up the tiniest bit, which that looks pretty good to me. All right, now we can play with all this stuff right here now that we have our S curve done. So for exposure, uh, I'll just play with it just so you can see what it'll do. We don't wanna go too high because we're losing all that, we're losing all the detail in this top part. In Lightroom Mobile, you can't edit a raw image. So if I was shooting a raw image, you would get so much more uh, information in the image itself. Uh, the gradient would have a lot more smooth. You'd be able to play with your image a lot more. I won't get into it right now because it's raw versus JPEG. That's kind of a long topic. I would recommend a lot of other videos for that. Um, so we're gonna leave the exposure at zero. If I can get it back to zero, there we go. Contrast, leave that. We already did the contrast on our S-curve. Highlights, what do we want to do with highlights? Now this, now the S-curve did mess with the highlights, but this, I like to just use these as well as the S-curve just because I can see it a little bit more. They're a little bit more general highlights, so I like that a little bit. We're gonna turn the highlights down just a tiny bit, get a little bit more saturation in there. Shadows, we will bring up the shadows a little bit. Whites, don't need to play with that. Blacks. We don't want to bring that too far up. I'm going to put that at 30 and that'll be fine. All right, so that's all I'm going to do in the light for now. And the color, let's go to the color. So let's, let's go ahead and do the color grading on this first. So you have your shadows, you have your mid-tones, and you have your highlights. I would start with the shadows just because it's on that side. We're just going to go in order on our way down. So for the shadows, uh, for this picture, I want it to have a orange and blue contrast to it. So like right now, uh, in my little setup I have right now, I have this light right here, shining blue. I have that bouncing off the wall. It's giving me a nice little blue right here, which blue and orange, uh, which is, I'm getting the warmth from this light right here, which is my hair light. And that's creating a nice little contrast right here. 
Now that's what I'm going to be trying to do in this image is give that blue is give that light blue an orange contrast. So what we're going to do we're take I like to put my cool colors so that would be the blue. I like to have that in the shadows. So we're going to take the shadows just turn for now turn it all the way up just so you can see which color you like the best. So right now I am thinking a little bit more of this light blue is what I want. So now that I have the color I found, now that I found the color that I want, now we will go for how much of it we want. Now we do not want this. This is garbage. Don't do that. We're going to turn it down probably to right about there. I like that. All right, midtones is going to be all of that. And for midtones, we're going to go a little bit warmer. Not crazy where it's purple, but right about there. We want about that. Now we can bring that down. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the frothy stuff on the top of the drink. I, if I bring it all the way down, it's really cold and that's not white. We want this to kind of mellow out to more of a white color, which when we get into the masking, we'll fix all of that later. And it doesn't look great right now, but the masking will help that in a little bit. This, I'm more editing at the moment. I am more editing the background colors. So we're going to bring that up just the tiniest bit to about right there. Now, uh, highlights. Highlights a lot of times can go crazy really fast. So you don't want to do a whole lot of color in your highlights. So let's see what color I want. I'm going, I'm thinking right about there's the color I want. Now we'll bring that down. Good amount. That's too cold, so we're gonna go right about there. That's what I want. All right, hit done. Now we can go to color mix. Color mix is by far one of the most important parts of your editing. So this is how I create a look when I'm editing. So if I want a really moody picture, I'm gonna take the saturation down all the way for every single one of these. So it's gonna take just a second. <laughs> uh, speed up through this. All right, now that we have all our saturations turned down, we're gonna go back through them one by one and choose how much saturation we want in the image. So let's start at red. Let's see what red is covering. All right, red is just covering the leaves, so there's not a lot really that it's affecting. So if there's not a ton that it's affecting, I'll put it back to zero. It's just because it's not affecting anything in a bad way. So now let's go to orange, let's turn that up. Okay, more leaves and a little bit of the sidewalk. We're going to leave that at zero as well. Now let's do yellow. All right, yellow is covering a lot of stuff here. I don't want it too saturated where it's like that, that is ugly, we do not like that. So we're going to take this and we're gonna actually desaturate it to negative 10. And when you're doing this, once you set a color, you can come back to the color. You don't have to set it, oh, I already did it like this, I'll just leave it. Don't do that because then your image is going to slowly, it's not going to be what you want it to be when you're done. So let's go to the red. The red I left at zero, but I'm not really liking that right now. So we're actually going to put that to negative 10. And the orange we're also going to put to negative 10 in your saturation. All right, that looks a little that looks a little bit better. Now let's go to green. Green is going to I'm pretty sure green green's going to have a good amount here. All right. So green right here is not doing a whole lot, but it is complementing the yellow because the yellow and green they're they're mixed in the background. The trees are yellow and green. So we're going to actually it's not affecting a whole lot actually. That's all the way that's desaturated. I think we're going to put that at zero. Zero is fine for me. All right, now the blues, light blue. What is light blue touching? A lot of times, light blue is not touching a whole lot of stuff, which is surprising to me. All right, let's turn the saturate. Okay, blue is touching a whole lot here. So what we're gonna do, we don't want, I love how the sky looks right now, but I hate how the concrete looks. So that might be a little bit of a problem, for me at least, I'm not really liking that so much. So we're going to desaturate that to about 20. That looks pretty good. Now the purple, 
when you're when you're doing pur purple and pink, a lot of times you're going to finish your image. At least for me, I've finished a lot of images. I've gone back through and looked at it. I've zoomed in a lot, and the pink and purple is just outlining things that have been exposed to have been way overexposed. A little bit of halation. We don't. I don't like that. I do not like that at all. So we're going to turn. Let's turn all the way up and just see what it says. See? See what I mean? All right. Let's zoom in right here. We don't like that. So let's go ahead and put that at zero. We still don't like that. So we're going to put that at negative 40. Let's zoom back up. All right. So my hand is really dark and that's okay. So we can't get a lot of color right now back into the image. All right, so let's just go to pink. Let's saturate that again. All right, there's my, there's the flesh color coming. So my hand is gonna be mostly of this pink color. Ah, there are flies everywhere. What is up with the flies? So we don't want too much. We want it to complement the purple. So you can see when I turn it up all the way, we're now missing that purple part where I had. So we're going to leave that at zero. We're gonna go back to purple. We're gonna turn it. We're gonna turn it up a little bit, just so our fingers are starting to look a little bit more normal. All right, we're gonna leave it at zero. I'm fine with that. Take the hue, and we're gonna move it this way just a little bit. And we're gonna do the exact same thing over here. Make it a little bit more red, a little bit more flesh color. All right, let's zoom back out. Let's see how that looks. Okay, I don't like that. We're gonna put it back down. There we go. All right, that looks it. So let's go back to the blue. We're gonna change the hue to make it not fully green like that, but we are gonna give it just a little bit more of that. Uh, I like to think of it as kind of that California color. I don't know why. California just comes to my mind when I think of that color, that light bluish green color. So let's get just a tiny bit more in there. Let's go to 20, 22. That's fine. All right, so that's pretty good. That's not gonna do anything right there because it's not touching anything. But we're gonna turn the temperature up just the, actually we're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave the temperature right now because I have an idea for that. Come down here, take the tint. Let's just put it all the way to the right, all the way to the left, see what we're dealing with here. All right, it's a little bit green, a little bit too green for me. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna move that. You know, that's fine, I like that. All right, saturation. Turn up the saturation, that's no bueno, we don't like that. We are actually gonna turn down saturation to 10 and, so we went through the color mix and we did the saturations already, but that was individual color, so when we come to this saturation, that is the global color. That's everything being affected at once. So we're going to put that at 10. Negative 10 looks good to me. All right, here's the part I'm pretty sure you can't do in the free version, but I'm going to show you anyway, just so you can see what how I would edit this image. So we're going to go to blur. I believe blur is not in the free version. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's been, I haven't had, I haven't had the free version for a while. So a lot of these new features, I don't know if they're free or not. So let's turn the blur up all the way just to see what it'll affect. All right, that's terrible. All right, that, that, that's pretty bad. I don't like that. So we're gonna move this down just a little bit now. When I'm shooting on my camera with my detachable lenses, um, I can have my aperture open to like 1.2 and that's gonna give me this blurry background. But because I shot this photo on my phone, the phone is not gonna have as much bokeh. Uh, bokeh is your blur in the background as I would like. So that's why we're using this fake blur. It is detecting what would what is in focus and it is defocusing what is not supposed to be in focus. So we don't want too much because that looks fake. That looks extremely fake and I don't like that. I don't like that. It just looks like you've messed with it. So I'm going to only turn this up to about 35 and then there are different shapes which does actually affect your uh, bl blur and let's let's zoom in take a look here 
All right, it's not making a difference right now. We don't have a lot of blur on, so can't really see it, but that's okay. So we'll just leave it as a circle. Check our focus. Um, we're actually gonna use this thing. Okay, it's right in the middle. I like that. Apply, it's redefining, I don't know. Refining, okay, that looks good. So let's now let's go to masking. Create new mask. Select subject. Now our subject, which is the coffee, has looked dark this whole time because this is what I was planning to do. We're going to turn up the exposure now, just ever so slightly, just to make it pop a little bit more out of the background, as if we had this light right here. The goal is not how we made the image look good. The goal is to make the image look good. So always remember that a lot of people are against the AI in your photo editing and against changing the colors too much. Just take it and that's how it is. That's fine. And the other way is fine as well because the pro we're trying to make a product. We're trying to make the image look good. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take those shadow, let's just play with the shadows for just a second. We want to bring those up a little bit just because my hand looks extremely dirty right now just because it's so dark right there so we're going to turn the shadows up just a little bit we don't want to turn it up crazy high because then you'll see that there is no detail there is no information in my hand so the colors won't be there it's just going to be gray it's going to be desaturated because there's no information there so what we're going to do we're actually going to bring the shadows up just the, just a tiny bit we don't want we don't want too much all right let's go to color we're gonna take the temperature and we're gonna slide it up about to about 20 20 looks good to me now just looking at it it's pretty green we don't we don't want that we want it to be balanced we don't want it too purple we don't want it too green so we want to balance it and balance does not mean it's zero balanced means a balanced color you have to balance your green and your purple so that looks pretty good right there. Saturation. Nope. Nope. All right, we're gonna turn it up just a little bit, just because we're losing some saturation in my arm and it's just looking gray. All right, now let's go to effects. We're not gonna do anything with effects for now. We're actually gonna go back to edit and we're gonna go to effects in this place. Now what we want is dehaze, cl texture, clarity, and dehaze. If I was doing sports photography, I would probably put the clarity up just a little bit, but not too much. Clarity can go crazy sometimes and we don't, we don't want that. So we're actually gonna turn it down just to give it a little bit more fuzzy of a look. Texture. We're gonna turn that up to about 15. Dehaze. Um, we're gonna leave dehaze at zero for now, and we're gonna use dehaze in our masking later. So let's go back to masking. We're gonna add a linear gradient. Click that. Drag, that's gonna create a mask. And we're gonna cover up my arm. We don't want the arm there that much so all right can anybody can you guess what I'm doing right now why I have my mask at this angle it is because we are trying to create leading lines to our image looking in the background here you can see that the sidewalk has a line going straight through the middle of my cup and then we can look and we can see here we have the white lines for the parking that is leading to the cup as well. And what's nice about that is because the white lines actually stop at the sidewalk, so it kind of stops right in the middle, and that's what we're going for. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our light and we're gonna turn the exposure down just to about right there, that looks good to me. And when you turn exposure down, a lot of times it's gonna bring more saturation into your image. So now, that looks good. Hit the okay, go to masking, add new mask. We're gonna do another linear gradient and we're gonna bring it down from this side. Right there, that's okay with me. Light, same thing, turn the exposure down. Not 
not too, not too much. We want it to be balanced. Again, we don't want it off balanced. So this is looking pretty good right now. So we're gonna add another mask, linear as well. Go like this, to about right there. Go to light, exposure, and we're gonna take it down to about right there. Now I think I have overdid the uh, exposure on this mask right here. So we're actually gonna bring that back up just the tiny, tiniest bit to about right there. Now we have one more mask before I believe we are done with this image. And that is going to be a, a radial gradient. We're gonna make that right there. Zoom out, move it to about here, stretch that, turn that. So that way it's like a ray. We're gonna stick it about right there. Now we can zoom back into our image. We're going to hit effects and we're gonna hit dehaze. And we're going to turn dehaze down just just a little bit to about right there and that looks pretty good like that so that would be like because the sun i i always look for where the sun is in my image and i will and I usually put a dehaze over that, just because it's like the light is leaking into your image and I love the look it makes. And the look it makes just looks incredible. Now let's look at this just for a little bit and make sure we like how it is. So right away I'm noticing that this mask we made, it's a little bit too dark for me. So I'm gonna go to shadows and we're gonna turn the shadows up just a little bit more. 40 looks good. Now, when you're editing, you do not want to overdo it. You don't want to overthink. You don't want to keep going, oh, this doesn't look right, tweak. This doesn't look like, tweak it again. Because eventually, you're going to go past what looks good, and that's going to become garbage. You're going to hate it, because it's not perfect. No image that you make is going to be absolutely perfect. So... Let's keep going on this. We're going to go to crop and we're just going to rotate it just a tiny bit just to make it a little symmetrical, a little bit more symmetrical. That looks good. All right. When I edit, I, I've never been a fan of too much saturation in my images. So I'm going to turn the saturation globally down just, just a tiny bit to about right there. Now come back to the light. We're going to mess with the exposure as our final thing. And that right there looks good to me. One of my lights just died. See, I lost that contrast on my face. Look at that. My light, I had the blue going in the background. It just died. I'm going to fix that. One, two. There. Now I'm super orange right here. I hate that. All right, whatever. So here's our original image. That's our edited version. Quite the leap. We made it look, we made it our own. All right, thank you for watching this video. If you learned absolutely anything, comment down below or share with a friend. That way they can learn how to make their photo look a little bit better. And uh, until next time, yeah. Uh, until, until next time. See you guys. <laughs>